there. <laughs> so I just ate it getting in the boat and stepped on a, a monster and squirted all over Josh's boat, but I think I got most of it out. I didn't squirt, the, the can squirted, let me just clarify. It's just not a regular Thursday. I think you look great. Seven dollar haircut. Seven dollar haircut? I saw the sign when it drove up. Oh, I thought you, you told me the price the other day. Yeah, okay. 25. Alright. What's look? 45, 25, 2 dollars. 14 or something? Like I mean, I could have did this myself. Exactly. Toby. What's up guys? Nick here. So here's the thing. I want to show you guys a little behind the scene type of deal here. Uh, my buddy Sam and Jose are in from Florida. Now, I want to tell you about what kind of has been going on, what we're doing, like this whole week long, we're out filming Savage Gear products. And this is Savage Gear America's team right here. And I wanted to fill you guys in a little backstory here. Uh, back when I was doing stuff with Mustad, I still am. Uh, my buddy Sam was the videographer, since moved on to be a full-time videographer for Savage Gear America's. What was that? Right? I got that what right, did you right? Say? Videographer, now he's a videographer? Yep. Yeah. A videographer a because he's a videographer. No, you said I was a videographer and now I'm a full-time videographer. Well, he was always a full-time videographer. No, I was the marketing manager, bro. <laughs> yeah, but you were also the videographer, right? Uh, yeah, I did everything. So this is the behind-the-scenes <laughs> stuff, so I'll just keep that how it is right there. I won't trim it all. Look, I'm not his boss, okay? I get his title wrong. That's all on him right there. I'm not even going to feel bad about it. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. Yeah. So anyhow... Long story short, uh, Sam was working over at Savage Gear Americas. Now, Savage Gear initially was just the European company and had stuff for sale in the U.S. market, right, Jose? Yeah, so basically they were the European company. They were in charge of designing everything, and they worked with a company here in the United States that distributed their product and gave them feedback. Got it. Okay. And now Savage, Mir Savage Gear, Savage Smear. Savage Gear Americas was developed to focus strictly on what the U.S. anglers are requiring, right? Yeah, so at, at a certain point, um, the headquarters at Savage Gear decided that um, the progress the brand was having wasn't uh, didn't keep up with the rest of the world. And mm -hmm. uh, they thought, you know, if they built a team uh, specifically for the U.S. market, that they could potentially uh, have better growth and make products that are more, you know, fine-tuned for this market. Um, and so they made that decision. They cut ties with the uh, company they were working with before mm -hmm. and uh, basically started a team kind of from scratch. And so they picked a few people from, you know, different parts of the industry that they thought would be, you know, exceptional at helping that brand grow. And I um, mean, awesome. here we are. So, so this is like a Sav Savage Gear Americas is almost essentially like a new company to the U.S. guys. There's still a lot of the previous Savage Gear stuff out there, but a ton of new products are being developed from different pros here in the U.S. Uh, Jose develops a ton of products. Mad still develops products like you guys are familiar with from Savage Gear over the years. Jose is awesome because he'll pick guys like myself's brain if, if it's something that I'm really good at doing, like frogging. He'll discuss these ideas, and he's very uh, critical about doing it right. He's very first conversation I had with Jose about product development, he's like, if you see anything that you think you would change, if you think I'm wrong at all, tell me to my face, be blunt about it. Uh, very real, guys, trying to make you the best products available. So long story short, Sam went to work for Savage Gear, and he's like, hey, man, yeah, I think it would be a cool idea to you, for you to meet the new president of Savage Gear Americas. Uh, he flew out here, Magnus. And Magnus is another great dude. Magnus is not here with us right now. N I'm not saying Magnus died. No, Magnus is <laughs> Magnus is over in Miami yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Magnus. We love you. Uh, God bless his heart. God bless his heart. No, uh, anyhow, Magnus is a cool dude. He flew over, met me in Sacramento, talked. I said, look, I've been fishing a lot of Savage Gear stuff. I love it. Even if I don't work with you guys, I'm still going to be fishing the stuff. Uh, the Shine Glides, the Glide Baits, you guys see me throwing them for years. Love the baits. Anyhow, long story short, we got along really well. Um, I flew out to Florida to go fish, and I've known Sam for a while now at that point. Mm -hmm. And we went tarpon fishing. I met Jose in person, fished with Jose. Uh, long story short, we became friends. I love shooting the sh these guys. Uh, they love busting my chops at the same time. It's fun. They're a good group of guys, and they're all avid fishermen. Uh, if you guys check, what's your Instagram? Uh, SCS Sam. 
S E S Sam, and I know you post a bunch of stuff on the Savage. I just look up Sam Root. Sam Root. No, and he posts all the stuff on somebody, not me. I create the content, so so it's up to them to time it properly and all that stuff. That's just responsibilities I do not want. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't need that in your life. Yeah, need that in my life. Yeah. So anyhow, guys, Sam was very avid. Uh, he travels all over the world fishing. Jose does too. So these guys are are hardcore anglers that do tons of multi-species stuff. So they get a very broad view of how things should be, how your rigging should be, your rigging, your weight of your bait, your castability of your bait, your hookup to land ratio. There's a lot of thought that goes into this because they're out in the field testing this. Um, and it's awesome when I traveled over to Florida and we were catching uh, tarpon on the pulse tail, um, like the trout style bait, it's not necessarily a trout, there's a ton of different patterns. Um, and pulse tail, bluegill coming now, shiner, mullet, tons of different stuff, but we were over catching tarpon on this, so I had the honor to catch my first freaking tarpon on yeah. an artificial swim bait. Big, and, big tarpon too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not, not talking no babies. Guys. These are like 100 pounders. Yeah, these are 100 plus pounders. Yeah. Um, so absolutely fantastic. On we, swim baits. On swim baits, yeah. yes. We went to what stream song or stream sound what is it stream song stream song stream yeah. song uh the it's like a golf resort right it's a golf resort uh i mean they have offer a few things shooting clays yeah. like a lot of stuff but yeah part of it is they have these uh just phosphate mines that have been around for i think 40 or 50 ponds. years just yes. epic and, and fishing the fishing ponds. is insane bill dance yeah. style ponds yeah kind of <laughs> so kind anyhow of. we went over there we shot product videos now uh What's uh? It's a Savage Gear Americas on YouTube, right? Yeah, Savage Gear Americas, and and, and we got a new website it just came out last month. Uh -huh. It's called Savage Gear Dash Americas with an S dot com, okay. and that should have all the new products and stuff on it. Yep. So make sure to follow that on YouTube, um, and our Instagram. Same thing, Savage Gear Americas. One Savage word. Gear Americas. Now remember, that's that's different than the normal Savage Gear Europe, but it's still cool. A lot of it still falls under that same. Uh, Cloud, but yeah. Savage Gear is America's is going to be it for us Americans. Yeah, we we have the same yeah. parent company, which is, uh, is Events and Sports. We own a bunch of brands, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the the one for Europe and the one for America is two separate uh, ones. Two different people run it and everything. Yeah, the content that you're going to see on the Americas page is going to be a, a lot more relevant to what happens here. The stuff that you're going to see from Europe is going to be you know a yeah, lot European of stuff. predator bike right. yeah. fishing yeah. and some of the European you know offshore fishing. Obviously, we're going to do bass. Tarpon, saltwater yeah. species, uh, lots of bass yeah. actually. So the yeah. reason why I wanted to show you guys this just behind the scenes, we're sitting in my shop right now, we're out fishing all day, Jose's flying to China tomorrow to check on some th few things, Sam's going to be here for a couple yeah. more days and he'll be headed back to Miami and going to some other foreign country to fish. Yep. I wanted you guys to realize these are avid anglers, hardcore businessmen that travel day and night to produce you guys awesome products. They're working with me directly. You guys know I've always kept it real with you guys. If I am supporting a brand, it is a great brand. And these guys right here will share this information back and forth to create the best products we possibly can. So, you know, follow the social media guys for Savage Gear Americas. Um, if you see us talking about new products that's coming out, trust me, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into the development of this. Yeah. Jose's leaving his family for long periods at a time yeah. to produce amazing stuff for you guys so check it out just wanted to give you a vibe right here um if you see these videos coming from savage gear this is the man behind the lens right here developing the products that's one of the primary dudes right there that will not produce junk for you guys whatsoever um remember i get the fun part to go fish this stuff and i say hey Jose, this would be cool and then he actually has to go do the hard work and get that done so it's yeah. uh, a lot that goes on behind the scene, guys. I wanted to share this with you, whether you enjoy this style of video or not. I wanted to show you working with an awesome group of guys. So Savage Gear, give it a new look, uh, whatever your old opinion was on it. This is a whole new light around it. Ton of awesome baits coming out. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.
Now you guys have probably heard about swim baits and definitely heard about glide baits, but if you haven't had a chance to play with the Savage Gear 3D Shine Glide, you have been missing out. This has been one of my favorite glide baits for years. They just came out with a brand new nine inch one that I've been knocking the tarnation out of. I've, if I knock all the paint off of this within the first few months, I'm gonna be absolutely stoked. And my favorite seven inch version, they have a smaller version than this, but me, about my glide baits living out here in Northern California, I like these big boys, but they all catch them. So when would you throw a glide bait like the 3D Shine Glide here? That's simple. When the bass are really hungry, needing to fat up for the spawn, or needing to eat after they went through a long period of not eating during the spawn. So pre-spawn, post-spawn, or when fall kicks in and they need to fatten up before the water gets extremely cold. These are three periods that you can catch the biggest fish of your lifetime on a glide bait. So this is an absolutely killer time to try it out, guys, with spring in the horizon. So what's imperative when it comes to throwing a glide bait is that you're gonna use a little bit beefier line than you normally would for your lighter line presentations, and you use fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is virtually invisible in water, and it has very low stretch. These are a visual hunting bait. Glide baits have drawing power. They move side to side, and they pull curious bass from a distance. You're gonna have a lot of followers, way more followers than you will eaters. So this is a great way to locate bass visually. You can cast it out there. Whether you catch them on it or not, you're now gonna know where they live and you can go back and catch them on another bait or you can stick to throwing that all day and get your big one. The fluorocarbon line is going to tell you that your glide bait is moving side to side. You're gonna feel that motion pulling on the tip of your rod. So you do want a sensitive rod. You generally want a faster action rod. The power and flex is right up in the tip and you have a lot of backbone. The seven and a half inch, like a medium heavy power, you get up to your nine inch, you're definitely gonna want a heavy power rod, but that faster action is pretty much imperative for driving that bigger bait forward with those hook sets. So when it comes to selecting your targets for a glide bait, this is a bait that you're gonna cover a large area with, whether that's a main lake point, the side of a boat dock, a big rock wall with a big shade line, you're making a long cast and you're covering that zone. You're always casting deeper, coming shallow. If you draw fish from deeper and they come shallow, if this fish comes swimming into a tighter area, that's a trap point for that bass to trap it. If he swims into the dock, the bass can now trap it. If he's up against the surface, the bass can now trap it. If it's suspended in the middle of the water column, you generally have to twitch it or do a 180 like I'll show you to trigger that strike. But you need a trap point deeper to shallower always. So let me show you an example when it comes to casting. If I pull up on a main lake point or a boat dock, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast it out there and I'm gonna bring it right across the surface. And I'm gonna slowly reel it in and the shine glide makes a fantastic wake on the surface. This can be really great on slick calm days that can break up that light penetration and they'll see that big bait fish up there swimming around like a wounded trout or a wounded bluegill and they're gonna come up there and take a strike on it. The benefit of starting on the surface is if those deeper fish are down there, you didn't let it sink and catch one and spook them all, you encourage that active fish to come up and get it. My next cast, I'm gonna count a few seconds, go in the middle of the water column. My cast after that, I'm gonna let it land on the bottom and then start my retrieve. So I have three options on each key area. So we've got through that first cast. Now we're into our second cast. We're gonna count it down a few seconds. It's sinking and you're often gonna see glide bait fishermen doing this. And what we're doing is we're making the bait start to go to one side and we're speeding it up and we're giving it slack, which is gonna cause that glide bait to come out and do a 180 turnaround. If there's a bass following your glide bait and you do that, and that big turnaround in your glide bait, turning around looking at that bass, is often gonna, often gonna trigger them into striking when your bait doesn't have a trap point and it's in the middle of the water column. So even if you're bringing that glide bait back to the boat and you see them following, do that speed up and give them slack and it's gonna turn around and you're often gonna trigger that active follower. Very critical factors. The speed of retrieval is key. Your rate of stall or your rate of retrieve and I'm gonna explain something to you here. As slow as you can move is going to encourage the bass to follow. If you're going very slow, it encourages them to follow it, not necessarily eat it. So if you want to find out visually 
If there's bass in the area and you want to see them follow, a slow, steady retrieve all the way is key. If you see one following, yeah, of course you can try to trigger them at that point, and you can do the same thing from long range, but you're not gonna necessarily see them follow it to the boat. If you try to do that 180 twitch around, chances are they're not gonna follow it all the way to the boat, but chances are you can get them to trigger out there. When you set the hook on a glide bait, this is a heavy bait in their mouth. When you're getting them, you feel them hit it. Don't hit and swing on slack line. Don't set the hook on slack line. Reel into them to where your rod loads and give it a big pull and wrench them hard. You need to constantly move them forward. This is a big heavy bait. You do not want to allow them to jump up and shake their head. You're going to keep your rod down and you're going to wrench them all the way back to the boat. Have your partner ready with the net or turn and physically swing them into the boat on some heavier line, 15, 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon. Whatever you need to do to stay confident in lifting that bigger, heavier fish to the boat. Do not let him get up and shake his head if you can prevent it. Get down and try to force that fish forward and don't let him shake that bait off.